Nordin's literally just jumped over the fence. I didn't think that I'd see Risky this soon. No, I'm not going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. The sexual abuse is one thing that happens. We are taking care of them. That's not really what we've seen documenting. That's what we're doing. It looks like Spain. It feels like Spain. It is Spain on the continent of Africa. This is Melilla, one of two enclaves that Spain has held on to since the colonialism of the 1400s. Today, they are the only borders Europe shares with the continent of Africa. In many ways, Melilla has always been a military town. Over the centuries, it has grown medieval fortifications and military barracks. Today, it is home to a huge military base. But where it once fortified itself from the Moroccan army, today it fortifies itself against migrants. Melilla is seen as a gateway to Europe. Every year, thousands of migrants risk their lives to cross over. Many flee in conflict and extreme poverty in sub-Saharan Africa, others from war-torn Syria or Palestine, and then there's the Moroccan children. Moroccans from the neighboring province of Nadour can enter Melilla for up to 24 hours legally. And tens of thousands do every day through four border crossings like this one. There are the shoppers and the workers, all who return at day's end. But then there are the children who never go back. 1,500 children came into Melilla last year alone. Most of them Moroccan, many with similar stories. Children like Aziz, Mahdi, and Hamouda. They left a life of begging to survive on the streets of Morocco, only to end up on the streets of Melilla. دخلت عمان والمي مي بال من المغرب المليليا مي عام 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 زي سنة زوج واردية ستون طلعون السنتر كنت طب أول ما جيت كده أقول لي أول يوم وصلت كنت خايف كنت فرحان كنت إيه كنت فرحان دخل المليليا دخلت المليليا بس ما في حقوق بالذات there aren't many rights in Melilla but there should be Spanish law states that unaccompanied minors are the responsibility of the regional government. Melilla is supposed to look after these children. But far too often, their basic rights aren't being met. They're all but imprisoned in overcrowded juvenile centers where there have been reports of violence and sexual abuse. This is La Purisima. It's the main juvenile center here in Melilla. It actually used to be a fortress but now it's where 700 children are staying. Even though they can come and go, it is in essence still a holding cell. Osama used to live in the Fez region of Morocco. Now he lives in La Parisima, home to four times as many children as its original capacity. His parents don't want him to be here. He ran away from home when his mom was traveling and his dad was praying. My family is very poor. We don't have any plan. My father, if he brought something for the mañana, for the night there's nothing. I wanted to help him to come here. It's like a dollar. The first one is this one. And the four is this one. The children who are always there, who are always there, who are always there, who are always there, who are always there. Entiende? Ducho la una, la una y media comida. La comida tampoco no está bien cocinada. Hay un problema. Hay una habitación, un cuarto pequeño, como tiene...
5 metros assim, 5 metros quadrado, como um quarto de banho. Antes havia duas camas lá, agora três, uma, dois e três. E de frente suja, outra três. E dorme no suelo. E já está uma cama, uma, a manta e a sabana e uma almohada. Já está. Do you feel like it's a prison? Porque está cerrado, sim. Está de noite cerrado. Não pode, não pode fazer o que te, não pode fazer o que te dá a gana. E os cuidadores mandam e há normas como um calce. So I've just finished having a chat with Osama and it's honestly been quite hard to really make out how to feel about this. Because on one hand, you have the 16-year-old boy who's upbeat, mature, bilingual and in some ways quite positive. But then on the other hand, you have him really casually speaking about scabbies, violence, stabbings and rooms being overcrowded. So one can only assume that a lifetime of poverty in Morocco that's driven him here to Spain in four years of living between an overcrowded center and the streets have forced him to normalize this. In fact, Europe has normalized this. Fierce anti-immigrant sentiment has become a convenient cover behind which rights can be abused and corruption largely unnoticed. La Parisima has been privately run by the same company using two different names for over a decade. Activists in Melilla, like José Palazón, say there is an economic and political mafia profiting from the centers and abusing the children. We've put a denunce in that en ese control que llevamos del centro desde hace mucho tiempo, algunas incluso por la, por la, la muerte del chaval. Maltrato, abusos sexuales, un montón, ¿no? Eh, todo tipo de, de... El maltrato que se les da, pues, fatal, fatal. Gente que, place, que parece contratada para maltratar, lo que no hemos conseguido nunca ha sido eliminar ese grupo maltratador que hay a las puertas del centro, que es el mismo grupo desde el año... Eh, 98 hasta hoy. Un grupo de gente que está contratada y que no varía, aunque varíe la empresa que gestiona el centro. With overcrowding, abuse, violence and accusations of mafia style intimidation, many children end up escaping the center out onto the streets. They make money parking the cars and that's a friend of theirs. Be it the flu smasan a day for you. Oh, ro, do, oh, ro. Sick win, tash, hal mizet. Spani on il, like a chavo, his skinny shoe, had il, like a sarako. When the kids first said that they're living in the trash can, I genuinely could not believe it. To make matters even worse, if possible, we see them basically scavenging, all five of them, in a trash can, eating, eating biscuits in the parking lot of a McDonald's. Having heard from the children and activists in Melia, I took my questions to Daniel Ventura, Melia's counselor for social welfare, who is responsible for the centers and the children. He admitted that the center is overcrowded, that it has an ongoing sewage leak problem, 
and confirmed that it is grappling with an ongoing outbreak of scabies. He conceded that the children's rights aren't being met. Están viviendo en situaciones inferiores porque resulta que el sistema de protección español ha reventado como consecuencia de una presión migratoria de un fenómeno nuevo que nadie hasta el momento está haciendo absolutamente nada para solucionarlo. ¿Cómo es posible que la Unión Europea, que la Comisión Europea, que las Naciones Unidas, ¿no? que hay un montón de países firmantes de los derechos del niño, ¿cómo es posible que no haga nadie nada? Esa es mi pregunta. ¿Por qué no lo hacen? ¿Por qué no acuden a Marruecos y le obligan a Marruecos a hacerse cargo de sus hijos? I've heard of reports of sexual abuse taking place. There was also two deaths that took place last year. What do you say to that? El abuso sexual es una cosa que ocurre. La agresión, la pelea, el conflicto, la agresividad es parte de la condición humana. Claro que ocurren cosas. Ojalá pudiéramos castarlo. Lo que no es ético ni moral es que alguien utilice esa bazofia para hacer informes. So that was interesting. That was basically a conversation of past the buck. Daniel Ventura spent an hour claiming that nothing was his fault or Melia's. It's the EU's, it's Morocco's, it's the activists, it's the children, it's anyone but the authorities of Melia. It is campaigning season in Spain. The country's Socialist Workers' Party Prime Minister has just called snap elections. His Interior Minister, Fernando Grande Marlaska, is in Melia campaigning to keep his job. Yasmin Fanzaro, Redfish Media. We've been in Melia for about a week here, filming a documentary about foreign unaccompanied minors in Melia. And Daniel Ventura has admitted that these children's rights are not being met. And he blamed central government for that. Why has the Spanish government, nationally and regionally, left these children in these conditions? I think that's not the, what is happening here in, in Spain. We are taking care, not only the central government, also the local government, we, we take care. Uh, about the minors. We are working together with uh, the Kingdom of Morocco to get them back. But what about their conditions? The in conditions Spain? here are, are uh, I, I, we have to, I have to say that the, the conditions here in Spain are quite good. We are, we are taking care of, of them. That, that's not really what we've seen in documentaries. That's if you don't mind. Hmm? See. Si. In the absence of proper help from the regional or national government, it's been left to a handful of local activists and Good Samaritans to fill in the gaps for the children on Melia streets. So every night at 9 p.m., local activists and volunteers come and bring home-cooked food for dozens of migrants, including children. The first night we came, we got a very cold response, especially from the children who said that they were fed up with journalists who come and film them and go as if they were a bunch of animals in a zoo. It's taken us three nights to gain their trust, and tonight they're finally letting us film a bit. At the food bank, we met 16-year-old Mustafa, whose hand was severely swollen. He was in visible pain, but had been refused care. طب ممكن اسالك برضه ليش جيت على المليه؟ ما حدش عندي مشاكل، نجي نقدر راسي وكذا، ما كاينش اللي كيعقل عليا تاني هنايا، ما عندي عندي امي ميتة، عندي بابا مجوج بواحد المرا و ممكن توصف لي انا شايفة ان ايدك انت موضوع تخنق لي الدم بحال هكا ماشي فاش تخنق لي الدم، مشيت كنتقبها باش تخرج من هذيك الدم، نضربها البرد وتقصها بالديري وكذا تدخل تتنفخات طب وانت تقدر تشوف دكتور او هل جربت بيستقبلوك ازاي؟ لا ما كيستقبلونيش كندخل كيقول لك خرج خرج حيت ما عنديش ها بلاصه بريوني. When you walk around Melia, the children are a visible part of life. But are they really seen? The sleepy Spanish town seems to carry on as normal, as if the children are just a part of the landscape, something you walk by every day and stop noticing. I wanted to know, what do Malians think of the children? Lo que no se puede tener un niño o un menor ambulando todo el día en la calle, sin hacer nada, sin ir a un colegio, si mal nutrido se le ven y mal. 
Eso tenían que tomarle, no es esperar hasta que llegue a los 18 años para volver a echarlo a su país. Sí, los menores es un problema enorme, que se tenían que ir, devolverlo a su familia. Porque aquí lo que hacen la mayoría son es delinquir. Que ver a gente, eh, o sea, niños merodeando por Melilla, en esa situación que vienen escapando un poco de la miseria y de todo lo que pasa ahí, pues, la verdad es que me da pena, me da mucha pena, ¿no? Hombre, sí que se los ve muy desamparados a algunos que estaban metidos en drogas, porque luego aquí, gracias a Dios, hay un sitio que se llama La Purísima, que los cuida mucho. There seems to be a mixture of criticism and sympathy, but the sympathy is passive, detached from the realities of the center and the streets, a reality that lawyer Maria Vieira knows all too well. El informe que sacamos de Frontera Sur lo llamamos sacar del laberinto. Eh, como metáfora, eh, haciendo referencia a los laberintos burocráticos en que se encuentran muchos de estos niños. Eh, en muchas ocasiones, un círculo vicioso, vemos cómo día tras día la Consejería de Bienestar Social, a la hora de tramitar la documentación, el permiso de residencia a los menores, interpreta la ley de una manera que nosotros consideramos eh, muy restrictiva. Because of this vicious cycle, the kids will do anything even risking their lives to leave. Risky. That's the name of the game that children here are playing. They use any means they can to try to sneak into containers and trucks from this port here, hoping to make it to mainland Spain. Some jump fences, others have spent days inside of trucks before even making it into the port. Just last week in Ceuta, Elias, a 14-year-old boy died after being crushed by a truck whilst risking. Since then, the authorities have clamped down to try to stop the children from jumping the fence, but that has not stopped them from trying. By the port, I meet 12-year-old Nur Dean sitting alone. He's only been here a week. He seemed shy, weary, and a little lost, just like a child alone at night would be. Nuruddin just told me off camera that the children go hide out in these rocks, sleep there, and then get up in the middle of the night so they can go risky over there. Nuruddin's literally just jumped over the fence. We've only been here an hour. I didn't think that I'd see risky this soon. I was, I was just speaking to him. He's 12 years old, he doesn't have parents, and he clearly has nothing to lose. I've been in Melilla for a few days now, and it's become clear that the process has been designed to keep the children trapped. Not between a rock and a hard place, but between the fence and the sea. And you know, I keep thinking about this here, Melilla's coat of arms which reads, Nun plus ultra, no more beyond. That is the motto of Melilla in more ways than one. And there's nowhere that motto can be seen more starkly than at Melilla's border wall. This is one of the most fortified walls on the planet to make sure that there is no more beyond for those on the other side of it. It is also the most unequal border in the developed world. Spain's GDP is 15 times higher than Morocco's just a few meters away from here. To conceptualize that, America's GDP is six times higher than Mexico. But while Donald Trump's wall gets all the headlines, this wall, which the EU itself funds Morocco to patrol, is hardly even known. Fortress Europe has been built by the entire political spectrum, brick by brick from the mainstream left and right. 
and that fortress is hiding a secret behind its fortified walls. When the EU saw the findings of its own report on the situation of migrants in Spain, it refused to publish it. It's done everything in its power to keep its content secret. Not even its own MEPs can talk about it. Cuando fui a verlos no pude en ningún momento tomar notas de, de los informes, tuve que acceder a una sala privada para, para ello. Para poder acceder a él tuve que firmar ese compromiso de confidencialidad. Son informes que ellos eh, califican de secretos justamente para, bueno, digamos que para tapar sus vergüenzas. Melilla eh, bueno, pues es el, el ejemplo práctico de todas estas políticas que lo que están haciendo es señalar al migrante como si fuera un enemigo. Lo que están haciendo estas políticas, que por cierto son políticas que no caen del cielo, que son políticas que aprueban el Partido Popular, Partido Socialista, Ciudadanos, socialdemócratas, conservadores, liberales, ese tipo de políticas que aprueban estos grupos políticos son las que están generando el discurso de odio y son desde luego el caldo de cultivo perfecto para el aumento del racismo y de la, y de la xenofobia. Y todo eso lo podemos ver en, en Melilla. That perfect ground, Melilla, a military enclave, Spain and Morocco. It's a town that still has a statue of the dictator Franco proudly standing at its port. These are the kind of things migrants see every day. Back at the center, Osama shows me his view. He can still see Morocco. He can see the fence. He can see Melia. His past, present, and future. I ask him if he ever thinks about going back. With all the time that has passed, the problem is that I'll be por la cara y si vuelvo voy a ver mi familia, mi familia y después qué hago y algún día va a venir y va a morir mi madre mi padre me entiende y después qué me va a dar de comer porque tampoco pa, mi padre muy rico me va a dejar algo para pa sobrevivir después el futuro por eso ha venido mi hija a buscar futuro نحس براسي كبير حتى مدمر طب ولما تشوفوا اطفال اخرى اسباني بنشوفو بس نشوفو منقيين مو عايشين في الشارع على حياته بيعطوه حوايج بيعطوه مستقبل يعطوه حريه يعطوه الاوراق باش يخدم حنايا حنايا احنا مقطعين ونوسخ وهما الا وما لابسين زوين دوسين حسنين From the moment I landed here in Melilla, I felt extremely uncomfortable, knowing the history of colonization and invasion and the disparity that global capitalism has enforced on today's world. Also how that has been the main contributor to the disparity on either side of Melilla's border. And that is why children like Hisham and Aziz and Mahdi have risked their lives for a chance at a better life somewhere. It all somehow seems to come together or be symbolized here in Melilla. And the irony has been with me every step of the way. That Spain colonized this land. Spain occupied this land in Africa. And now, today, it wants to keep others out. <laughs> 